my name's Harold. Uh, today we're going to have a uh, unboxing of my late arrival birthday uh, birthday Christmas present. I'll get it all straight here in a minute. Uh, I got a uh, Taurus 608 SS6. Uh, the SS stands for stainless steel and the 6 means it's got a 6 inch barrel. This is a 357 Magnum revolver and uh, my intended use for this is shooting bowling pins. When you go to the bowling pin match, uh, they, at least my shooting club, they start off using semi-automatic pistols and you can have eight rounds in each one of them because the 1911 design only holds eight. And uh, after the, after the uh, first part with the uh, semi-automatic pistols, then you have a revolver part of the contest and so revolvers can hold up to eight rounds which makes the Taurus just right so let's just get right on with the unboxing here this is the way it came to me from uh, from the dealer and we got in here a neat little bag to carry it in and here is uh, the pistol we got a little rubber cover there on the uh, on the rear side, it uh, also has uh, keys for the, for the lock. We'll put it out here and get the box out of the way. This, uh, like I said, this pistol is a an eight round revolver. You can see it's empty. The barrel is ported to reduce muzzle flip, so when you're shooting it, it won't be bouncing up in the air for you. It's designed so if the, if the uh, hammer is not all the way back, that it's not going to not going to fire. It's a single action or double action, whichever you know. Of course, I'll be using double action uh, for the, the bowling pin shooting. It has a safety lock back here on the hammer. You get this little bag and uh, let's open it up. Key will come out. Apparently, you get two keys, which is pretty nice. And then you just uh, poke it in there and lock it. And there you are. It's locked. Unlock it. And now it works again. Um, <clears throat> this, this gun has uh, a six inch barrel, it's about 11.6 inches overall from. You know, from the end to end, and it weighs 3.16 pounds, which is uh, heavy enough, I would say. It's it's not excessively heavy, but uh, yeah, I'd say it's heavy enough not to have a bunch of kickback to it. This is actually a 357 Magnum, but I'm going to be shooting uh, 38 Special ammunition in it. I'll have it loaded up pretty hot, too hot to use the ammunition in the 38 Special, but just mild stuff for, for this pistol here. The rear sight is adjustable for both elevation and windage and the front sight has got a nice uh, orange uh, tip to it there where you can have high visibility and see it good which is good for an old guy like me with, uh, with poor eyes. Um, if you're going to use something like this in competition and you, you've missed some bowling pins and you've used up all eight rounds, you need to be able to uh, load the thing up pretty quick. And so that's what we have here is a, uh, a speed load. These are the eight rounds necessary to fill the thing up. You've uh, got a little carrier here that sits on top of the eight rounds. It pulls them out. If you've... Uh, if you've shot all eight rounds and you still haven't finished cleaning up the bowling pins, you pop her open, dump your empty brass out into, uh, into a little box because you'll, of course, be wanting to save your brass for reloading. And then you take the speed loader and you line it up and drop them right down into the cylinder, which is something that I'm going to have to practice on. But it loads up pretty quick instead of putting them in one at a time, one at a time, like Marshall Dillon always had to do. All right, we're going to take them all out of here. 
it's empty again in case anybody's worried about safety we're we're not going to shoot any old rednecks here today all right so this this little accessory here will hold eight times or four times uh I'm sorry, eight times eight, which is 64 rounds. If you can't hit five bowling pins with 64 rounds, you probably ought to give up and and go do something else. But it keeps all your ammo all handy for you all day long, and you can load up and stay competitive. Hopefully, with this another accessory. This is from from Five Star Firearms. And they, they make these in different sizes. You can get one that's small, it's just holds two. You can get, you know, all manner of variations on that particular thing. As I said, this barrel is uh, ported up here on the front to reduce barrel flip. <coughs> now that uh, and I've got the little booger unloaded and we really unboxed and such, it's uh, probably a good idea to start working up some uh, loads to fit it. I'm going to have to try out several different uh, recipes there to get the right amount of powder for the bullets and since this is uh, an unusual little feature for me we'll have two unboxings we're going to unbox the uh, the bullets uh, here in a minute and then we're going to take some cases and fill them with powder and shove those bullets in them and, and uh, make up some reloads make some ammo to go run across the chronograph and uh, work out the right load for shooting bowling pins. Everyone's YouTube channel has an unboxing so we're gonna unbox. Of course I've already cut this sucker open but I couldn't do that and hold this camera with one hand. But we got here um, packing this I suppose. Newspapers and 238 grain 38 special bullets. See here, this one's kind of popped open. There you go. 238 grain, 38 special thunderheads. Those are gonna gonna be for shooting bowling pins, of course. I've got uh, I've got the bullets and the powder and the brass. All right, so we need to make some uh, some uh, ammo for the, the new pistol, so. We're going to make a few different loads just as a test because I'm not certain how much of the powder that I've got is going to going to do for me. One of the things I did was to get the case feeder going. I went out in the garage and made that little aluminum piece there to slide up in there so that the, the cases would fall through uh, and stand up straight. The, the large case feeder is, uh, that's the one that Lee suggested I use with 38 special, but it doesn't seem to me like it's wonderful. But anyway, I'm going to put this thing on the tripod and we will make a few test rounds to take to the range and see how they come out. We'll shoot them across the chronograph and see just how fast they really are. All right, now we've got her focused in here. We're going to drop one case over onto uh, the first stage there. See it roll out. Well, Deprime it, shape it back to the factory shape on the outside. Come over to the station two. We're going to insert a primer. We're going to come over to station three, and there's no there's no powder in here. We're going to just use station three to to flare the uh, mouth out on this thing so the bullet will set down in it. All right. So what I'm going to do is one at a time. I'm going to fill eight cases with four and a half grains of powder and another eight cases with uh, five grains of powder to uh, shoot over the chronograph and see how it works out. Now I don't have a powder trickler so I'm going to have to use this little, this little yellow dipper here but what we'll do is we'll hit tear on this thing so that it discounts, well it should have worked there, it discounts all the weight of that case. We'll take this powder and we'll start to trickle it in there out of the little dipper till we get four and a half grains. There's 1.7. There's 
It's a little bit too much there. 4.9. Take some back out. 4.3. 4.4. So it just needs a tiny little bit out of this dipper to make it right. There we go, 4.5 grains of uh, powder. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll just zoom in on it. There's 4.5. It looks like 4.6. Yeah, it's settled out at that, so we'll just knock a little bit out of there put some back in there we go we're right at it there we go it's, it's rocking back and forth to 4.5 and that's, that's where we're going to leave it. We'll put uh, a bullet in it, which is uh, one of these suckers here. Zoom it back out. Load one of these in there and uh, go ahead and run it through the press. And I'm not going to do all these on, on camera because it bore you to death. But let's uh, set them on this station here. And this is the bullet seating station and crimping. So seat and crimp the bullet. Next station is factory crimp. I felt it crimped. Okay. And there we are. There's one loaded up and ready for testing at the range to see just how well it does. I'm going to do eight of these. Not going to do eight on camera because that would be boring but i'm going to do eight of them at four and a half grains and then i'll come back and do eight of them at uh, five grains and then we can take them to the range and and see how close to 900 foot per second we get okay for anybody that's not uh, reloaded any ammunition or seen it done i'm going to explain that what i just did was not the way that i would normally do this normally i would fill this tube Chuck full all those four tubes full of uh, cases, empty cases. This little guy right here, full of primers to send down. And this hopper right here would be full of powder. So every time I crank the handle, one of the cases comes down the tube, lands on this spot, gets the primer pushed out of the old, you know, the old spent primer pushed out. This plate turns, and I'll show you it turns, uh, and the plate turns, move that one around, a new case comes in right here. Here we put a new primer in it, and we go and we crank the thing, and it rotates around. The one with the primer is here. He goes up into this thing where it flares out the mouth of it to catch the bullet, so you can easily insert a bullet, and this little guy dumps a pre-measured uh, amount of powder into the uh, into the case and then it comes on around here and I'll set a, a set a bullet on top of it it goes up in that die to be crimped and have the bullet seated the right depth the next station around it gets a factory crimp just crimps it a little better uh, a lot of presses don't even come with that last die and a lot of people don't use it uh, but when things are going, every one of these stations will have some stage of loading the cartridge and that will be dumping them over into there. I don't know how much powder I want to use just yet, so that's why I was using the little scoop. Uh, once I know how much I want, I'll put a little disc in here and let me, let me get one of the discs out. I have a chart that uh, you take and it knows see the density of that powder right there and I know how many grains I want so I just cross reference across the chart and it tells me how big of a hole I need in one of these discs anyways I was saying 
these little holes hold so many uh, cubic uh, centimeters of powder. You know, it'll be like, uh, you see this one right here is holds 0.4 cubic centimeters of powder. And this next one holds uh, 0.37 cubic centimeters and so on. And I've got three discs like this. And once I just know exactly how many grains of powder that I want, the little chart will tell me that that many grains of that particular powder is that many cubic centimeters. And I'll pick out the disc with the right hole and I'll put it on this uh, little job right here. We'll pull off, I'll pull it apart here so you can see how it works. And in the bottom of the uh, little hopper is a hole. And this hole lines up right now with, let's say, that hole right there. But when I, when I index this thing, this piece slides over here and all the powder in there falls through into the cartridge. And then, of course, it is indexed itself back. It's got a little finger here that fits in a groove there and moves it back and forth. So that's that's what makes this thing worth using. It's a, a progressive press. You can every time every time you crank the arm, you throw out a finished uh, round of ammo.